We got <laughs> with Sam that does the dance. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to another Weird Wizards Wonder Workshop in Medieval Engineers. It is quite a mouthful, but we're sticking with it. We're sticking with it. Uh, here I am at the top of the Impossible Tower, as seen in the previous episode. If you've not seen the previous episode, you should check it out. Um, because I show off the tower in, in a bit more detail and, and explain how it was built. Uh, at least, kind of quickly um but but enough i think to uh, to replicate it if you've got the game um anyway i'm going to jump into first person view here before i accidentally tumble off of the uh, this wizard's balcony at the top of the impossible tower um quite a view from up here there is the wonder workshop laid out below but first of all let's just go inside we'll go inside as you can see i've got my little alchemical station here but i've only got a couple of barrels of supplies and you know things were starting to run low plus i was thinking i'm gonna have to bring other things up here which is you know it's fine if it's me doing it because i'm a wizard and i can just magic things up here um but what if i wanted my minions to bring stuff up um we would have a problem because well i mean if we go down uh, we go downstairs and have a look at the inside of the tower. It's um, it's uh, it's it's not really finished. Um, it's just a big empty hole with uh, with a load of terrain voxels kind of spammed about inside it. Um, so uh, so how on earth would my minions, of whom I have many, I will have you know, despite the fact that uh, they are all currently out to lunch, um, how would they get stuff up here? Well. I decided I needed a solution for that, and so I have done what you do in Medieval Engineers when you need a solution. I have engineered one. So let's go and have a look. This is kind of like the upper loading bay. We've got a few little storage areas here, um, but this is the whole new section. So we've got a little balcony, which is the loading balcony, and then we've got all of this woodwork and these mechanisms here, which uh, we just edge over, lead all the way down to the lower loading bay down there. Um, and let's uh, let's just fly down and have a little look at it shall we oh there we go looking at my lovely apron as we come down right here we are at the lower loading bay and here is my loading basket i mean it's pretty basic i have to say it's not the most it's not the prettiest loading basket in the world um but it does the job at least i hope it does the job i've not actually tested it yet uh, at least not under load um so uh, so yeah here we go this is the loading platform it's um actually now i come to look at it it looks like it might be slightly misaligned but um you know that's teething problems teething problems i am a i'm a wizard you know i mean we don't we don't worry about the the little details like whether something is is perfectly aligned or not um we'll leave that to the real engineers as wizard engineers we just kind of like uh, we just chuck stuff up and hope that it works so we've got these little walkways now leading down leading down to the main entrance and uh, also down here to a little um, a little supplies platform, our lower most supply platform. So we've got our lower most supply fat platform, our lower loading platform, and our upper loading platform. And if we look from down here, just taking the full majesty once again of the impossible tower, um, I think I am going to keep it. Uh, a few people commented that they thought I should keep it uh, for the time being. At least it's going to stay. I'm, I'm kind of growing. I'm kind of growing fond of it. Um, I'm concerned that it might be a bit of a performance drain uh, on the workshop, but um, we'll see. If we start running into frame rate problems, then we will um, we'll uh, we'll move it. You know, we'll use our wizardly magic to uh, to just shift it somewhere else. Um, but for now, it's going to stay. Um, whether I'll leave this loading platform on the side, I don't know. It changes the aesthetic somewhat. Um, but again, this may well grow on me. Let me know what you think. Is the loading platform a keeper? Uh, or, or should I get rid of it? And before you make up your mind, you should watch the rest of the video because it doesn't just sit there, as you would expect. Um, it actually, it actually does stuff. It is a loading, a loading crane, a loading crane. Um, it proves just how long the ropes can go. I don't know how much longer than this they can go, but I was quite. I was concerned when I built this that they wouldn't stretch all the way down, but no, I mean, no problem at all. All the way down to the bottom. I'll, at one of these days, maybe in the next episode uh, or a future episode, we'll have to do a test to see just how far these ropes go um, and just kind of what kind of craziness you can do with them. Now, let's have a look at the mechanism here uh, because we're doing a bit of power transfer. And uh, thank you to uh, whoever it was who posted the power transfer video on YouTube. That's where I got the idea for doing these like little crosses with ropes connecting them, which allows you to, to basically transfer your rotational motion from one axle to another axle uh, so that the rope the ropes move as one. So these both unravel and ravel up as one. And we do that here to synchronize these two ropes. And we also do it here 
to transfer power down to what was originally a hand crank here, a hand crank handle, which was fine. Um, and I kind of, I built this little platform here so that you could come out and operate the hand crank and kind of like peer down. Uh, there it is. Look, there's the hand crank. Still, um, I used magic to connect this to this, so uh, so that's why there's a gap. But it's just magic. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, I don't think you can actually. No, look, <laughs> you can't hand crank it anymore because um, because I've added extra bits to it. But originally, you would you would peer down here and you would hand crank it up, and you know, that's quite a long way. So it it takes a while. Um, and I decided, you know, even if it was my minions doing it, I still, uh, I still thought that it was, it wasn't the wizarding way. So I've attached some more mechanisms here. We have another axle which comes all the way out to a larger power transfer cross here, which connects to a uh, a magical rotor. Um, now, uh, ordinarily, you might, uh, you might attach. Um, sails to this for a windmill, um, and that would, you would assume, be what drives the mechanism. Fortunately, um, once again, uh, being a wizard, uh, we're able to, to power it with magic. So, um, if we just find the, the, the magical symbol in the center and touch it, then there we go, it starts turning, power is being transferred through these ropes to the large power transfer cross, uh, and then through the axle to the small power transfer cross, up to this small power transfer cross, which is on the rope axle, which is then transferring across to the other rope axle, so we get synchronous movement. Ah, oh, is it not? Is it not a joy to behold? Um, it is, of course, magic that's driving the whole thing, but it's engineering that's making it work. Magic only turns that one that one thing there, and I mean, I suppose technically speaking, that could have been here, and we could have had a single one or a single power transfer thing, but. Um, you know, it was built in stages. Uh, at the time, I, I, I didn't have a clear plan in my mind. I was just kind of building it up to see how it goes. And actually, it, what is quite important uh, is the ability to reverse it. But we'll look at that in a second. Um, so there we go. It's cranking away. Now, it's it's not the fastest lift in the entire universe. Um, I mean, here it is kind of slowly cranking up. But as I say, it's this is for my minions to use. So... You know, I've saved them the effort, now they just need to be a little bit patient. And they can busy themselves whilst it's going up. Um, I believe you can stand in this, you have to be a little bit careful, uh, because as a, as a wizard slash medieval engineer I have uh, quite a lot of mass. But uh, there we go, look, there we go. It's a lift! It is lifting me slowly up. I daren't move, because I'll send the thing flying all over the place and probably smash it to pieces and dash it against the side um, of the Impossible Tower, which still needs its name, by the way. Nobody has ventured a name for it. Um, we have had a, a name suggestion for the forest, um, but nobody has yet ventured a name suggestion for the Impossible Tower. Um, for the time being, I'll just keep calling it the Impossible Tower, but, you know, I think it deserves a, a more fantasy-esque name than that. You know, a more, a more wizarding name. Um, right, obviously it's going to take an eternity to wait for this thing to go all the way up, so uh, let's just fly off. Look, there it is, slowly, 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 rising up. Glacial, one might call it. Um, but it works, nonetheless. I mean, it's a hell of a long way up. In the, I had to build this here because I did make efforts to build it kind of hanging, um, but things get pretty glitchy when you're building hanging. And there are, I mean, there are bits of debris. Um, kind of scattered around uh, that, that went a little bit crazy um, uh, from from explosions that happened in in construction, shall we say? We have taken out a small section of our of our lower loading platform here as well, um, and uh, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. Look, we've actually taken uh, a pretty big chunk out of the side of the tower because we had um, we had some debris rain down. So. Uh, you got to watch that, especially when you're constructing in or around a very tall structure because stuff picks up a lot of momentum as it falls down. So even a relatively small piece of debris can uh, can do quite a lot of damage when it reaches the bottom. I will just say, this is this is far from a perfect design. It would be much more stable if I was using four ropes instead of two, which I think actually I could do just still using these two, uh, these two axles. I just put a rope there, rope there, rope there, rope there, axles in between. Um, and then connect all four up. I probably should have done that beforehand. I literally only just realised how easy it would be to do. Oh, here we go, look. Here we go. It's arriving. It's slightly cockeye. Like I said, we could probably fix that by having four rope drums instead of two. Um, now, I don't know what actually happens if it reaches the top. Does it smash to pieces? Oh, oh, it, maybe it does. Quick, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Ah, I can't reach it. Turn off. Turn off. 
Okay, I've turned it off. Um, oh, that was a panic, panicky moment. Right, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Actually, it needs to come down a little bit. Um, so clearly the minions would have to would have to be on hand and ready. I could maybe put some stoppers in to stop it at the right level. Um, but if you had any any barrels or things on here, it's it's a it's a gap, but it's not a massive gap, you know. I mean, my minions are, are brave fellows. It does swing around quite a lot, obviously, on its two ropes. Um, so it might be a tad on the dangerous side, but 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 but. Uh, yes, here's the important thing. Now, these rotors, my magical rotors, um, I've only been able to come up with the magic necessary to make them rotate in one direction. Um, one day, hopefully, I will come up with magic, the magic necessary to uh, to make them rotate in two directions. But as it is, what I have to do is build one facing one way and one facing the other way, and then basically just disconnect the ropes and reconnect them. Now, what's quite important, actually, is that the rotors be... In more or less the same alignment in fact it's pretty much as close to the same alignment as possible so I'm just gonna nudge this rotor it's it's a little labor-intensive but it's it's a hell of a lot less labor-intensive than uh, than if you had to hand crank it the whole way up believe you me right there we go oh, that's too far far too far 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 too far there we go down again up again down again how's that Does that look about about right I think I've gone a little too far I'm going to call that pretty much spot on. Right, here we go. So we just connect up each rope to its counterpart position. Rope, 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 and rope. There we go. Look, all four ropes connected up. And now, you guessed it, we activate the magical rotor. Power transfers, power transfers, power transfers, and down it goes. Again at a glacial pace. Um, sadly, there's no way of sort of unlocking these and having them just run free, because then you could have the thing fall under gravity most of the way and then just slow it as it reached the bottom. Um, hopefully that will come uh, once the gods deem it, um, deem, it, deem it necessary or deem it uh, important enough to implement. Um, so yeah, there we go. But it does the job. It does the job at the moment, and it does mean that my minions can um, can bring goods and supplies up to the tower without me being around all the time so I can go off adventuring like a wizard, like wizards do, um, causing trouble and uh, and turning peasants into frogs and all of that kind of good stuff. Uh, okay, so I thought I would just quickly do a uh, a little load test to see how it performs. So we're going to drop a few loose barrels uh, onto the cargo lift. We'll um, we'll load it pretty heavily. There we go, perfect. Um, now I've made no attempt at uh, at balancing that load really. I mean, it may be sort of slightly balanced, but. We'll see. We'll see how stable uh, the uh, the cargo lift is when uh, when bringing up a whole load of alchemical supplies. So this is all stuff that I need for uh, for my research uh, in creating potions for turning peasants into various farmyard animals um, and other useful things, obviously. And um, and let's see. It's all hooked up for ascent. So we'll uh, we'll go and switch it on, and then we'll rush down and take a look and see. Um, if, I'm sure it'll be absolutely perfect and we'll, and we'll ascend no problem at all. There we go. It's off. What did I tell you? Hmm? What did I tell you? It's perfect. It's fantastic. All these barrels ascending quite happily uh, towards the top. A little bit of jiggle here and there, but it's fine. Um, with four ropes, uh, it would be even better. But as it is, I think we're going to call that a success. I think we're going to call that a win. Um, brilliant. Fantastic. In fact, actually, let's put a couple of stoppers on. Let's do that now. Um, whilst it's ascending. I, I, surely there'll be no problem doing that whilst it's ascending. Um, so we want some stoppers here. So we're going to put stoppers there, 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 and there. Little boots. Little stopper boots. Um... Of course, uh, you might be clever to put some rubber or something on there, but maybe we don't. Have, maybe we've not invented rubber. Um, was was rubber around in, in medieval times? Probably not. I mean, rubber trees would have been. So um, there might have been a type of rubber. Ah, oh, I'm actually really, I'm really happy with this. I'm really pleased. I did not expect it to work anything like this. Well, I thought it would be jiggling around and stuff would be flying off. Um, and just generally it would like arrive at the top with virtually nothing left on it, if anything at all. It, if it hadn't in fact just swung about um, and smashed into the side of the tower and, and taken a huge gouge out of it. But no, look, it's fantastic. Oh, this game just continues to impress. It, honestly, it does. Should we just take a few, we'll just take a few beauty shots um, of the tower 
from various angles um, with its with its lift slowly rising up with its load of alchemical supplies um, let's get rid of that full on full on beauty mode um, oh we don't want to go there that's not done yet <laughs> that size not done yet um, outside the walls is is a no go land um, for for the time being there we go look that's the whole you can see the whole uh, the whole workshop from down here we've got the loading lift uh, almost arrived it's almost arrived right at the very top the full tower visible our little house our warehouse oh it's all there it's all laid up and imagine how cool this is going to look as we keep adding new and interesting things um, to, to fill it up new and interesting wonders we haven't even touched on weaponry um, and and of course weaponry is going to be a big part of medieval engineers siege weaponry and things like that so uh, so when that arrives um, when it arrives it's already here so uh, so we really need to make a start on that oh, look, there we go there we go what happens if we don't if we don't Stop it! We can. <laughs> it does the dance. It does the barrel jiggle dance. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Um, that's almost better than stopping it. There we go. Um, they're, they're gonna. They're all gonna sort of fall out or something. But they. They. they look. They're stuck in the mind the gap gap. Um, it's fine. Uh, that almost helps with unloading. Look. You know. You just wait for the barrels to be jiggled across to you, and you just grab them and. And chuck them in. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, great. Fantastic. Well, we'll leave that jiggling around. I have been Weird Wizard. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I will see you later.